We can invest money for the future, but being environmentally aware is possibly the most important way of investing in the future. Chef Sheldon Raju is passionate about food, adventure and sustainability, and he's prepared a menu inspired by World Environment Day, which takes place on the 5th of June. Hey, good morning, welcome. My name's Sheldon. I'm here at beautiful Colk Bay. It's absolutely such a splendid morning. I normally come out here, just sit down, make myself a chai tea. I'm gonna teach you guys how to actually get your own chai tea going as well. It's very simple. There's just actually five essential ingredients that you need to know. Some beautiful fresh ginger. I'm just gonna peel it quickly. And I just love this because it adds some spicy notes to the chai. There we go. Nice and clean. I'm just gonna cut a few slices here. And then I'm just going to do the same with the turmeric as well. Just give it a quick little peel. Just get all these bits out. Really, really holistic, really good for you. We've got some nice and whole star anise. This adds this licorice fennel notes to the chai. So we just got a couple peppercorns in here, a couple cardamom. I just add about three cloves in there. Just leave the lid slightly ajar, just so the water can reduce. And that way the spices will just intensify. Okay, we're about ready for our cinnamon and star anise. I'm just gonna pop that in quickly. About three star anise should be perfect. So this tea's traveled more than most people have. I'll pop some in there. So in next goes my ginger, my turmeric. I'm slowly gonna give that a little stir. In goes my sugar, judging by how sweet you want it. I like to add just one. And in goes our milk. Again, it's just about a cup here. And then we're gonna turn our heat up and we're just gonna get this up to a boil. Great, I'm just gonna pop my strainer on here now. Slowly begin to strain. It's just really, really privileged to be out here. Fish chai tea, no better way to start your day. Hey, good morning, George. Yeah, can I grab three samosas, please? No problem. Oh, those look great, George, eh? You're welcome. Thank Enjoy you, it. have a good one. Enjoy. Mm, wonderful, just as I remembered. I see the fishmongers are getting ready there. I'm gonna head on down and see what the daily catch is. Pick up some nice, fresh, sustainable fish. Hey, morning, Louisa. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. Very well. Oh, you got some beautiful bream in here, I see. Yeah. Oh, and some snapper. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, but this is what I'm after. Excellent, I think I'll take this one. Yeah. Can I ask a favor? Can you just butterfly and pin bone it for the bride for me, please? Yeah. Is that it? Yes, please. Thank you. Got my fish. Let's get cooking. What we're going to do is keep it very simple, easy and fresh. We got some great watermelon in here. We're just gonna toss it all together with a bit of salty feta, some olives, red onions, and a bit of lime juice. I'm just gonna remove the seeds from my watermelon. Let's just use the tip of our knife and scrape out all these little seeds here really quickly and then cut them into bite-sized portions. Next up, we're just gonna basically slice our red onions very, very thinly, and then just get it soaking in some beautiful lime juice. So, strongly advise purchasing one of these. One of my favorite tools in the kitchen, just a mandolin. Perfect. So these are thinly sliced. Up next, I'm just gonna slice two limes and then squeeze that beautiful juice all over this. And you just want these onions to soak for a bit. The longer they soak, the brighter the color will stand out. Let's move on to the olives. These are luckily seeded, but if not, if they haven't, just find something flat, give it a little pound, pop the seed out, and you can toss that straight into your watermelons. Just keep a few of them aside, just to plate on top so the colors contrast. What I'm gonna do is just take a handful of these and mix them through. I told you this was gonna be easy. All that's left is just to finish off the plating, little drizzle of olive oil, and then scatter in some fresh herbs. I just wanna keep it nice and fresh. I'm just gonna add coriander, a little bit of mint that's been beautifully torn, and just some fresh basil. Great, I'm just gonna give this a quick little wash. Trusty squeegee bottle with some water always helps when you're outdoors. I'm just gonna pull mine as you can see, get rid of all those heavy little stalks.
herbs are in, all I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of this olive oil, drizzle it over, and it's just going to help get all those flavors mingling and working along each other. Next is just finish off and just plate it. And we're just going to scatter it out on this plate. Oh, it looks delish. Final step, a little crumble of the feta. Now you can imagine that white just popping, making everything look just fantastic. And then I'm gonna finish it off with just some freshly cut basil again. Just let it fall naturally. Little drizzle of olive oil. Man, this, this looks absolutely beautiful already. I wish you guys were here. What I'm gonna do now is just quickly pop this in the fridge and then carry on with our next course. The reason I've chosen yellowtail for today is because it's in season. We really need to start caring about our oceans. If we don't fish the right fish at the right time, there won't be any left for the future generation. So we're gonna do this in a very traditional way. Just very simple, on the braai, great heat, and we're gonna use fresh local ingredients. So first up, we're just gonna open it up. What I'm gonna do is just season it gently on the other side as well little fresh pepper. I'm using white pepper here. Up next, now traditionally in Cape Malays what they would use is apricot jam but I, I want to keep it a bit more local. I've made this great Cape gooseberry jam and I'm just going to spread it very gently on there. The gooseberry itself is just works perfect with fish. All it's missing is a bit of squeeze of lemon juice to give it that acidity that it needs. And give a nice little squeeze of some fresh cut lemon here. And all we're going to do is just pop this one side in the fridge for 10, 15 minutes, let those flavors just marinate and mingle. And what we're going to do is just carry on with our next dish, which is the paella. Over here, what we have is some great fresh local ingredients again. All right, let's get started. First things first, in you know, my prawns are going to go. In there goes a bit of oregano, a little bit of chili flakes. And I'm just going to get a little color on that. Oh, cook it till it's almost done. They're done now. I'm gonna pop them into the bowl just to stop the cooking. So we just marinate our chicken, a little bit of salt, some smoked Spanish, paprika, a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna place it skin side down, get some beautiful color on that. Oh, fantastic, listen to that sizzle. Just cook this very gently on the skin side down again, slowly working its way up, getting beautiful color. Nice and crispy on the skin side down. Give it a quick little flip here. Just to seal in all that flavor. And I'm gonna pop it back into our bowl here. This is one of my favorite ingredients to use. I've got some amazing Spanish saffron given to me by a really dear friend. So I popped a little bit into my chicken stock just to infuse. That's the best method of getting the most flavor out of these. So next, onions are gonna go back into our paella pan. We're gonna slowly sweat this. Put our garlic. And then a sofrito. Sofrito literally translates into soft fry. What I've soft fry here is just a bit of peppers, tomatoes, bay leaf and garlic. Sweat it off with a bit of onions. In is gonna go my paella rice. And I'm just gonna move it around very gently. I kind of want it to be smooth, creamy and full of flavor. In is gonna go stock. Today I'm using a nice, beautiful, fragrant chicken stock with our saffron. You can use vegetable stock if you like, fish stock, it's really up to you. I'm gonna let that cook about three to four minutes. I'm gonna just tend to my fish here. And I'm just gonna slowly cook it, skin side down, slowly cooking it till it's almost done and then do a quick little foot. Fantastic, crispy, crispy, crispy skin. Great, so this is ready for our next step. I'm gonna place our chicken in, our prawns, and then our squid. Squid goes in last, because we don't want it to overcook. Slowly just sprinkled around here. And next step, all we're gonna do is just gently cover this up. We're gonna turn that down to a low, medium heat. And we're gonna just let that finish off very gently. So let's have a look and see how this guy's doing. Final squeeze of lemon juice little bit of butter and this baby is done and then we're just going to place the lid on slowly get that smoke working again right now he's looking great 
paella is done. And a final squeeze, some orange juice. Pop this on a plate. Oh, it smells so good. And a dish a little fish out for me as well. A little bit of salad. Guys, this is smelling fantastic. I'm gonna go out, enjoy the view, and of course, tuck into this great food. <laughs>